How's everybody today? Awake? Yeah? Great. Fantastic. So, Andrew, great uh, presentation there. I think something that uh, really kind of resonates a little bit is, you know, when you're talking to customers and you have content, it's, it's not so much that you're giving them something that they can just exist with, I think, is it's, it's you're talking with your customer. You're actually having a two-way interaction. We talked about it in the presentation earlier. People are starting to talk this way as opposed to this way. So when you put content out on the web, to Andrew's point, communicate with the customer. Give them something that they can go back and forth with and give them content that you'd be proud of and that they're going to be interested in reading. So I think you're absolutely right. Uh, doing that kind of stuff and making your customers engaged gets them to be on your website and want to be there, which is kind of what we're trying to do here as SEO artists. So without further ado, let me pull up the uh, my, my deck. So my name is Kevin Hill. I'm the director of search engine marketing at Harbor Freight Tools. It's my job to take uh, paid uh, traffic and organic traffic and comparison shopping engines, put that all together and figure out what the right mix for it is. So what I do is figure out how all those channels work and then give advice and work with my team to develop ways to make that happen. Something I was noticing here is, is that Andrew and I kind of like this black theme. I think if you took two guys and decorated houses, we'd have black and stainless steel furniture. <laughs> and if you really want to stretch it, maybe black and yellow. So, <laughs> so Harbor Freight Tools is a national retailer. We have 350 stores across the United States. We're expanding that out to four or 500 stores. Um, you'll find everything from electrical tape, welding supplies, uh, uh, soldering guns, greenhouses remote control planes for your kids. I, I take my son there sometimes and he goes nuts. He always finds something that I didn't know we sold. So he's a great resource for me doing my research. Send a nine-year-old into your stores, have them come back out with whatever they wanted to buy, and that'll be SEO fodder for you guys. So there's one tip you guys can work on. My background is kind of interesting. I come from a technical background. I have an accounting degree. And I leverage that to create accounting software for companies. and program things for them. So that gave me a unique perspective of business versus technical. So I know what to do to make the business happen technically, and I can bridge the gap between the two. I went to a company called toolup.com, ran that for about uh, 10 years, the online side of it, up to about $21 million. And then just about a year and a half ago, came over to Harbor Freight to help them with their search engine marketing program. So the big question is, what is SEO all about? What what is it you do daily, and what is it you're perceived that you're doing daily? So when I talk with my employees and I hear other people talking, they say, we're doing this. We're going up. We're getting you clicks. We're getting you traffic. We're doing all sorts of amazing things, right? We're going to take and generate this, this traffic is what I hear a lot of people talking about. And um, what your manager hears might be a little different. <laughs> so that's the message that maybe they don't want to hear. Traffic to them is cost. I mean, if I drive 100 million visits to a website in a day, I've just broken the IT infrastructure. The CTO runs into my office and goes, what are you doing? And I go, well, I drove traffic to websites. That's what I'm supposed to do. Well, you brought the website down, so now I've got to dedicate resources, and all my IT guys got to be up until 9 o'clock tonight, and maybe even 2 in the morning, and they're going to be really upset, and I won't have anybody here tomorrow because they're all going to be sleeping. So that's what it's about. We all know this, you know, show me the money. That's why we're in these jobs is we are there to bring traffic to the website, to expose our company more, and to bring the money in to pay for our salaries, to pay for the product that we're selling, to grow the business, to hire more people, to make an empire in three quarters of the world. So how do we bring value? To us, it's really, really obvious. We know what we do. Um, you guys have all probably been to countless uh, presentations of techniques and things that you can do to increase traffic to your website, to increase ranks, to increase you know position, to get links, to generate content, and things like this. H how many here today are managing your SEO traffic? Okay, maybe maybe a little less than half. How many of you are actually responsible for driving that traffic? Mm, a few in here. How many of you are just starting at SEO and trying to get some ideas and figure out kind of what it's all about? Okay, 
couple. So we increase qualified traffic to our site. Some of us think this increased traffic, but qualified traffic is what we're trying to do. We're trying to find traffic out in the world that is interested in our product and is interested in looking at our content and is interested in buying things. In my case, I'm interested in selling uh, ridiculously priced tools to my customers. So I go out and I search the web with many different tools and I try to find keywords and positions that'll get us traffic that'll actually convert into revenue. We make the changes that uh, improve our rankings and our traffic. And I'll get to that in a second. Rankings and traffic are two different things. Um, if you go and you start telling your CEO or the owner of your company that, I got to rank one. See what I did? I'm here at rank one. Jeff Ferguson of Fang Digital Media uh, kind of talked about this, and I thought it resonated really well. Let me ask all of you a question. When I get to rank one, where do I go? <laughs> There's nowhere to go but down. So let's talk about generating traffic that generates revenue, okay? You can always generate more traffic, and you can always generate more revenue, but you can only generate to position one. You can't go zero, negative one, and so on. So just think about that when you're presenting this to someone who maybe doesn't know SEO or isn't comfortable with it or feels like you're a black box that does these magic things and things kind of happen. Talk with them about overall effects of what you're doing, traffic that you're driving. So we also generate content. So Andrew had some great comments about generate great content. And I don't know, how many pandas do we have in the world now? <laughs> what, two and a half, I think, or something like that? Just rolled out a couple of uh, maybe a week ago or something like that. I guess three is coming up. Who knows? But it's rolling back to kind of the basics. The games that we used to play, uh, you know, buying links, that one was a big one that got slapped down. There were a couple people that, uh, you know, paid the price for that. Um, and really that was, I think, a case from, Go you know, Google just kind of saying, we're going to set an example and we're going to start laying the board so that, you know, people start generating quality content. We can put those things up front. Also, maybe the brand play is a little bit more in, in play now. So generating good content that people come to your site and spend time at and reading is a way that we bring value. We also build links. We don't buy them, right? Nobody buys them not anymore. But we build links. We reach out to each other and we say, hey, I've got some great content here. You've got great content there. Can I get a link? You can't have a link from me, but I want your link. <laughs> <laughs> we do a little pol more politely than that, but right, that's the ultimate link to get. And we tweak our web pages. We do things like title tags and meta tags and meta keywords, which are feeling like really old school that doesn't matter anymore. And we put keywords on, on our website. And we do things like uh, creating link webs where we use keywords that we're trying to drive traffic for and move that around our website. So as you're doing all of these things, I mean, these are all complex things. I mean, I've just spent, what, five minutes, six minutes, kind of going over very high level, all these little things that we do. And I think each one of us here knows that those things involve lots of technical details. You've got to run down to IT. Hey, I need this changed on the website. I need this tag up updated this way. And then you've got to run over here and go over to text broker and say, I need some content. Or you've got to you know, write the content yourself. And it takes time. But describing all of this, these activities, you know, when you're reporting up to higher up in the chain or lower and kind of demonstrating your value, which you need to do daily, those things don't really resonate. What resonates is, is, hey, I'm driving traffic and these are the strategies I'm taking to do it. And saying, look at the results over a month, look at the results over two months. And setting this expectations in SEO that it's the long-term play. Look at it over one month and you may not see a huge increase. Look at it over a year and you'll be like, wow, that's a lot of free traffic. And that's when your value starts showing. And if you build those expectations, people will understand what you're doing, and you can win. So what are the challenges of SEO? There's all sorts of things that we're talking about today. We're talking about mobile web, design, ranking, internet, optimization, all these kind of things. How do we track those results? And what do we do with, you know, what keywords are we going to choose? I mean, we've all talked about, you know, all these high-level things that we're going to do. And I'm going to dive into one of them today. How do we choose the keywords we want to operate in, operate on? When you go back to your teams or when you go back and start doing this kind of stuff, uh, the one thing I want you to go back with is the method that you can think about of how you choose the pieces that you act on. I mean, if we all have unlimited budgets for SEO, I mean, we all do because we're amazing at what we do. And every click we come in, I mean, gets amazing conversions at $450 a click. Amazing stuff. But for those of us who are a little more limited, 
how do we focus in on the keywords that are really important to us? And how do we set up a way to do that without just kind of going and throwing a dart at a board and saying, that one feels right? Now, a lot of us have the experience that we, when we look at keyword information, our gut will tell us the right thing. We've been in this long enough that we know that, yeah, this keyword's going to work and this one doesn't. Okay, but how do we actually set that down and do a mathematical formula for it? How do we use data to drive our decisions? How do we get away from this, I'm the touchy-feely guy, to, hey, here's my data-driven analysis that I do that gets me 90% of the way there, and how can I pass that on to the people beneath me that I want to bring up so that, you know, one day I can rule the world, right, and own, I don't know, some great keyword that gets a lot of clicks. Who knows? So that comes to the thousands of choices that we have every day. So each of you has a website. Uh, I have a tool website. You have an insurance website. And uh, uh, the guy from Gap's checking his email. So he must be checking his website. <laughs> so how do we go out and we look at all those keywords and determine what we're going to do with them? So that's really one of the jobs that we struggle with as SEOs is which ones do we want to focus our you know, energy into. And Bright Edge can help you with that. That's one of the tools that I use to, to kind of give me information around what keywords are doing. But I've, I, we've, we all use Bright Edge uh, here, right? Is that right? Yes? Raise hands. If you don't use Bright Edge, get it. It's a great tool. You'll see why at the end of this. Um, Bright Edge helps us measure what we're doing with the, the keywords. It doesn't help us get the keywords. So there's tons of data sources around there. And you might sense a theme in the data sources that you can use, you've got Google, the keyword tool. You've got Google, the webmaster tool. You've got Google AdWords. You've got Google Ad Planner. You've got Google Analytics or Site Catalyst, you know, those guys. Google AdWords, you can actually go out and buy keywords as an experiment, find out what traffic's actually out there. I Sometimes we'll go in and look at the estimator, but as you saw in the previous stack, sometimes it doesn't quite pull what you're looking for, right? I mean, you, you put in something and you get, I don't know, cordless drills, and I get Lake Havasu vacations. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that doesn't make a connection with my customers. So I go into Google AdWords, and I'll actually buy a keyword and say, you know, I'm going to spend 100 bucks here and just see what the traffic is for a week. And I understand what the traffic is, and I know kind of what's happening with impressions. I may not know what click-throughs are and you know what the customers are doing, but I'll have some solid numbers. Google um, uh, also gives you conversion rates and impressions. If you're running a PPC campaign and your two teams are aligned and they're not like you know hiding from each other, no, you can't have my data, you can't have my keywords. Google AdWords can give you conversion rates, it can give you impressions, it can give you bounce rates of landing pages, so you can start understanding what the customers are looking for when they land on your site. Google Ad Planner. This is a really kind of cool one. I like playing with this one because you type in your website, you start seeing what Google thinks about you and what other websites are related to you. And then you can start diving into their websites and seeing what they're buying and start looking at what's going on there. That'll give you great keyword ideas to start going down the rabbit hole with. Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a great source. Uh, Site Catalyst or any of the other um, analytic suites that you have installed on your sites. And I hope you have those installed on your sites. You can look at conversion rates there. You can look at what keywords are currently coming into your site. It tells you what customers are currently doing on your site, what they're actively searching for and discovering on your site. You do have to be careful with Google Analytics because if you just look at the keywords in that one section, you can kind of closet yourself into the ones that are working for you and kind of forget all the ones that are the hard work. But in the case of Harbor Freight, when I started a year and a half ago, they had a very, very rudimentary SEO program uh, and really not a whole lot of focus in it. So. I was really starting from ground zero and saying, okay, what are the low-hanging fruit areas that I can, I can tackle? And with Google Analytics, I was able to go in and see what the search activity was for Harbor Freight and start deciding which ones I wanted to work in on and start looking at. And then Google Webmaster Tools. This one will give you rankings. Now, it's average rankings, so they kind of bounce around and move around and all that kind of stuff, but it's good enough for government work and hand grenades. Um, if you use Google um, Webmaster Tools, to get those rankings, it gives you some data that you can start playing with and understanding that how you move the needle can result in you know, different, different results for you. And Bright Edge. It wouldn't be you know, 
uh, Bright Edge conference if I didn't talk about Bright Edge. Bright Edge gives you measurements and information about what your actions are doing. It also gives you great information you know, and explanations. I can go in and say, okay, I want to do an H1 tag, I want to do a title tag, I want to do a description, I want to do this, that, and the other thing. And I can actually get kind of information from Bright Edge that kind of describes to the layman, to the IT guy, why I'm doing this. Gives them a good explanation of why this is important for me to do these things. And I can't tell you how many times I've had to sit down with IT people and, and help them understand my world of, of what I'm doing. And then I learn from them their world of what they're doing. But this tool, Bright Edge, can help you bridge that gap of you know, giving them an understanding why it's important to do these things as opposed to, I don't know, expand the SQL server or add new hard drives or put more memory into the, into the system. So how do we do data, uh, how do I do data-driven decisions? I mean, what do I actually do to start mining this data and understanding which keywords to work on? So I've got some keywords that I pulled out of Google Analytics. Test the quill, my stapler, hypnotherapy that works, PC load letter, um, any movie buffs might recognize some of those uh, keyword terms. And I have some positions that I pulled from Webmaster Tools. I matched those two up. Now what I'm looking at is I'm looking at some actual data about some keywords that are coming to my website and what they're ranking for. And I know that position 11 is on the second page, gets a higher click-through rate than position 9 or 10 on the first page. Um, I've got position 10, 8. But what I understand now is, is that if I move those, I'm going to have an effect on it. And I can tie in from Google uh, Webmaster Tools, I can tie in some actual visits, some actual revenue, and some actual conversion rates. So right away, I have some actionable information here. I have some keywords that I know I'm driving traffic to, but I'm not driving any sales. So maybe I want to get the website medic out and look at those particular keywords that aren't converting and do some work there before I actually drive more traffic there. Because I know I've got some low-hanging fruit with some keywords that are already converting and maybe don't have the greatest positions. So then I go in and I pull out of my brain just magic numbers that kind of multiply. I can multiply the position. So I, I'm assuming here that if I move from position 7 to position 1 or 2, I'm going to increase my traffic. So what I did is I did some research online to find some studies to see if you're in position 7, what percent of traffic do you get? And if you're moved to position 1, what's that going to do? So I just inverted that and put it in there and just said, okay, this is going to get me some high-level numbers. And I think some of you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So I can project out what my results might be if I actually move some of these guys. So you can see here out of, what, 10 keywords? I've actually got a couple of keywords there, three keywords that actually could generate revenue if I increase position. They're already converting, so they're healthy. They're already ranked. They're already driving traffic. And if I can just move the needle on those guys, guess what? I get to go to my CEO, the owner of the company, and say, I just made you money. You want to raise? I guarantee you, every single one of you is going to say, when you say that to them, they're going to be like, yes, I want that raise. Get me that money. So by doing this kind of analysis, and you can do this you know, 50,000 rows, 100,000 rows, 200,000 rows, and lay these things out you can get information about what keywords are going to be most profitable for you to maneuver on. So right there, I want a red stapler, cheap wick, and bulk matches. Because if someone steals my red stapler, I'm going to need some matches and some wicks, right? <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, there's other people in this economy that feel the same way. So how does Bright Edge tie into all this? So Bright Edge ties into my measurement of how I'm doing. So I went and told the owner of the company, I'm going to give you a raise. I'm going to take and raise. I didn't tell him how I was going to do it. I said, I'm going to give you money. I'm going to show you the money. Bright Edge can help me do that. Because now what I can do is I can use Bright Edge to track in this really sexy report that tells me if I'm ranking on page one or page two or page three. And where, where this really comes into play is, is when I have lots and lots of keywords, and I've kind of drilled into the easy ones, the ones on position, you know, page 2, position 11, but I'm looking at like page 3, position 35, and I start using Bright Edge to help me understand, am I moving the needle and am I actually doing the things that are going to affect what my rankings and my traffic are going to be? 
And if you tie Bright Edge in with your Google Analytics or your Site Catalyst, it'll actually give you traffic, tell you what you're doing and how the traffic's being affected as well. This is all, all good, but what Bright Edge really helps me do and helps my team do is it helps me understand when it's time to move on. I've already got everything to position one. I've got a bunch of the keywords that I want to move on. Now, you'll notice that I'm talking about position one. I'm not talking to anybody above me about position one. My team's talking about position one or position two or position three because for us, we understand that that's just a handy metric of showing us if we're actually moving things up and down in the Google rankings. For people who don't do SEO every day, it's the traffic. Am I getting more customers to the website and are they converting? So by doing this, we were able to get a 40% lift in traffic over the last 90 days. We were able to understand when to move on to other um, keyword groups. And it gives us quick tips on actions we can perform quickly. So I can take out of Bright Edge, I can take a lot of information and just shoot it over to IT and say, these are all the changes I need to make. And I can go through them and sort them and decide which ones are effective to you know, move and which ones are effective to do. And it's really easy for me just to put up a graphic and say, look, Look at all these page two and page three ranks that we had. And now look, all this page one stuff. And if you have your uh, analytics tied to it, you can show traffic changes too. So right here, you have some information about kind of how things are moving. You can see right at the end of the graph, the last two columns there, we switched our keywords, put some new keywords in there, and we started maneuvering again. We started working on a new set of information. And my final advice to you is to use this data to drive your business. Let your data tell you where those wins are. It becomes less of a guessing game. It becomes much more of a measurement game. I'm going to go measure what my website's doing, and I'm going to go find the places to attack. So test, experiment, always experiment. If you have a gut feel on something, that's not to say that data is going to prevent you from doing that. Go out and have an, have, you know, an experiment, and, and try to set it up so that you can test it with data. I'm going to do this crazy thing, and then I'm going to set it up and look at it and see what happens. Um, a lot of the social stuff we've been talking about is very hard to measure. But if I set up an experiment and use the new tools that Bright Edge is rolling out, and I do a bunch of tweets and a bunch of Facebook posts, and all of a sudden I see traffic landing on a page, maybe I know something's going on. And if I can isolate that, then I can actually create a model and start seeing if I can reproduce it time, over time again. And then I have a system that I can put into effect, much like the system that you put into effect, right? And then measure it. And if there's any questions, I'll take them now. Okay. Yeah. So I think it, you know, this is mm -hmm. great in terms of seeing the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then I was wondering, did you take keyword uh, keyword difficulty into account? Did you overlay that in this functionality in the tools, or how did you take that into yeah, account? Yeah, going into you know looking at keywords and looking at competing sites to say how many links that they have versus how many links that you have, looking at how many people are ranking ahead of you, what their sites look like. This gives you the directional information of keywords that you're going to want to operate in on. And, and really culls the set down for you to then go out and start doing that, you know, and looking at which keywords you want to actually kind of feel like you can maneuver in on. So, I mean, you, you guys have done that before. You guys know which ones you can move and not move. And there's ways to get that information as well. Um, that is one of the um, good um, pieces of Google AdWords Keyword Estimator. You can see what the competition is estimated to be for particular keywords. When you know a keyword, that tool is pretty good. When you don't know keywords or you're trying to research it, that tool can get a little loose. Yes, sir. Is there like a metric that you're associating to your long tail efforts after you tackle the top 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 head terms? Well, we're still in a position of literally tackling a lot of those head and midterms. Um, what we do do is we do take and we do, um, uh, in our PPC campaigns and in our SEO campaigns, we do take and group keywords into um, uh, buckets. And we'll actually monitor Google Analytics to start seeing if we start, you know, if we create a midterm or a head term and we start seeing other keywords coming in, and they generate revenue. Those will filter back up into our, our process, again, because of the revenue value, not the, not the visits. If I get two or three visits and it's 100 bucks or 500 bucks, 
it suddenly becomes you know, interesting. So it'll filter itself up into there. Uh, interesting stuff. Thanks for presenting that. Yeah. In terms of the uh, the my brain multiplier <laughs> section, uh -huh. um, did you base part of that on click through rate studies for organic that have come out? Like for example, the AOL data that came out a few years ago. Yeah, there's um, one that uh, there's one that came out. Um, I've used a couple of them that bounced around just to, the, depending. Um, there's one that came out in 2008, I think MIT did a study on it, and there's another one, um, I think the Yahoo one, um, I think. Um, but what it does, it's not so much that you are going to be correct in those assumptions. You're not going to, you know, if I get 10 clicks here, I'm going to get 1,000 if I go to position one. But what it does is it gives you a directional multiplier for the positions. It's really kind of a, you know, an exponential formula that you're really doing. But rather than going to complex math, I just threw those numbers in there to help me directionally. I, I also noticed that, you know, in Google Webmaster Tools, they have there are click-through rates for organic. And but oh, yeah, yeah, there are, there are click-through rates. Wait. Yes, there are. And yeah. looking at them, from what I've seen, it, it's kind of hard to take them on face value. Like, it doesn't seem mm -hmm. quite right. So I was wondering if you'd looked at any, used any of that in your forecasting model. No. Um, for, for that, typically I try to match up what, um, what kind of traffic I'm getting from uh, Google Analytics versus what it's estimating impressions to be in Webmaster Tools, if I really want to get to that level. I'm more interested in you know, what kind of actual traffic I'm getting and what position it thinks that I'm in, in Webmaster Tools. So the piece I'm pulling from Webmaster Tools is keywords and then position, and not click-through rates. I'll use Google Analytics to kind of pull that information of, you know, what traffic I'm seeing. You're welcome.